designation or authority to serve in one of these institutions. This manifests itself in numerous ways, including the extraordinary number of hours it takes to access uh, public data, the time it takes as an outsider to coordinate with state agencies on policy, program, and delivery issues, and avoiding duplication of effort. We're proposing a three-part public-private partnership that measurably increases the state's investment by bringing both cash and in-kind resources to the issue. Yep. Chair Gelser and members of the committee, um, I'm Dr. Phil Long, superintendent for the Bedford School District, uh, and I am a uh, member or was a member of the former um, Oregon School Facilities Task Force, so I experienced that and all that went with that. I'm also currently a trust, trustee with PACE, the Property and Casualty Trust for that many school districts use for insurance purposes, and so I'm aware of risk management issues in, in schools. Um, I'd like to reinforce the importance of this bill for Oregon school districts and to address the need for the task force, the importance of data hubs that are included here, and the challenges that are met through technical assistance included in this bill. Though distinct, these three elements are interdependent, and as an aside, I'm also a graduate of John Marshall High School, class of 76, so... And Just up the road, okay. I was at Franklin's. So okay, okay. Yeah. well, mine's closed, yours isn't, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate. Yeah. Um, the, the, the need for the task force, uh, there's a great disparity in educational opportunity in Oregon schools, and it's reflected in the facilities where children gather to learn. Their accessibility of technology that supports that teaching and learning is also another um, gross disparity. The growing reality is that for almost all Oregon school districts, is their increasing inability to address deferred capital maintenance. Um, some of those you might even call abandoned maintenance. These are significant equity issues. Those were the issues that I faced when I became superintendent in 2005. The average age of facilities in our district, 67 years. The last bond that we passed uh, was in 1995, and it, it built media centers. It did not really upgrade infrastructure. We had a failed bond measure in 2002. The focus of that, in retrospect, was not appropriate. It was on a technical skills center put a million dollars in upgrades to our two large comprehensive high schools and minor things to our 14 elementary schools. So what I inherited in 2005 was about two and a half million dollars in debt, certificates of participation that were used to do the prep work and some architectural things for that failed bond. And I was faced with schools that were in desperate need of those upgrades, a community that was distrustful and debt. And I think that for me, set me on this education of how do you do this and who do you need to involve. 